very good evening. There's unrest in the North London borough of Enfield this evening. A police car has been vandalised, shop windows smashed and the police say a number of premises have been looted and some arrests have been made. Extra police have been brought in to contain violence. More police vans have arrived tonight. Officers in riot gear have been deployed along the high street. Police with riot shields have made some arrests. Some groups have been dispersed, which had gathered in various areas. Shops are being guarded as well tonight. As you can see, officers on horseback have also been deployed, along with police dogs trying to move people on. Let's talk to our correspondent, Jason Farrell, who's live in Enfield for us tonight. Uh, what's the very latest, Jason? Well, Enfield Town is a little bit quieter tonight, but the officers here taking no chances. You can see the Metropolitan uh, Riot Squad officers are still behind me. And although it is peaceful here now, you wouldn't want to have been here three hours ago. It really was uh, a scene of quite a lot of aggression, and it was a very uh, threatening atmosphere. Um, the police officers took, took uh, a, a set, the, the centre of the town, really. They, they, they positioned themselves within the centre of the town. They started stopping and searching people as people gathered here. We don't know why uh, Enfield Town was, was chosen, but it was definitely chosen. There seemed to be a, a Twitter and a Facebook campaign to, to get people to come here. Uh, anarchists obviously communicating with each other by mobile phone. And slowly, uh, as the afternoon went on, more and more people gathered here. And by around about 8 o'clock, uh, it really started to feel uh, quite threatening. Uh, police officers were making the odd arrest, but then by about 10 o'clock, uh, shops started to be smashed up and I, I was here, I filmed on my mobile phone a chemist's uh, being smashed, it was being attacked by looters and uh, they were throwing sticks and bricks through the windows just while the police's backs were turned basically, they were down the other end of the street and it wasn't until about uh, 10 minutes later that the police came and then cordoned off that chemist for a short while uh, but then as soon as they went away again, someone came back and had a go at Ladbrokes next door. So it's really been like that. And then on this street where I'm standing now, they've been, uh, they've been basically running battles with the police until, in quite an organised operation, large numbers of officers moved up the street, slowly pushing um, the rioters up the street. Uh, and they really managed to clear out this area very successfully, in fact. They've drafted in officers uh, from Kent as well as the Metropolitan Police, so it's been a large-scale operation. They haven't told us exactly how many officers have been involved, but we know that there was a large number and there have been a number of arrests. But, of course, as they pushed up the street, uh, the anarchists melted into the side streets and they started up elsewhere, and we got reports that they were moving north, uh, slowly up towards uh, Waltham Cross. We're not sure if they've reached there, but on the way, uh, they also attacked a retail centre uh, and caused uh, some disruption there. And we understand there was looting as well at this large retail centre. So it has been a night of running battles again. Some cars have been set on fire, we understand. Uh, but so far here, the violence seems to have dissipated. Uh, and the officers really have got the uh, situation under control in Enfield Town, at least. Jason, for now, thank you. Let's talk on the phone to the Enfield Council leader, Doug Taylor. A very good evening to you. Good evening. Uh, what do you make of what's happened in the town centre tonight? Well, I'm appalled and horrified by what's happened. I visited the town centre uh, early in the evening and later in the evening, and clearly we've had the attacks on, on shops, but we've also had... Um, youths running around the area causing damage after that and it's really been a horrific scene uh, for Enfield, a bad night for Enfield in all senses and just as David Lammy earlier today described what happened in Tottenham uh, yesterday as an attack on the people of Tottenham, I think tonight's been an attack on the people of Enfield. Um, is this a sign of community tension in Enfield or is this just a, a group of youths taking advantage of of what we saw yesterday? Well, I listened to uh, your last speaker, and of course what we don't know is where these people came from, and to what extent they are local people, and to what extent they are from outside of the area. And it, it could well be that we simply are the next borough next to Haringey, and therefore it was an inconvenient and maybe regarded as a soft touch after the actions in Tottenham. Now, I would be disingenuous if I didn't say in Enfield, like most of London boroughs, we have our difficulties, and we have 
high levels of deprivation and we have difficulties with some young people. But this is way, way beyond the norm. And this, there is no justification, no proper explanation, no mitigation for what we've seen tonight. Are you satisfied with uh, the way the police have, have handled this? Because as we saw in Tottenham, obviously to a, to a stronger degree, there's also been a case tonight where they have struggled to, to keep a track of all these youths and violence and damage has been caused as a result. I, I, I think it's... Uh, firstly, I'd like to think, say that I think the police are doing a tremendous job under very difficult circumstances and I suspect one of the problems we've got here is that they had to keep their eye on what was happening in Tottenham. They had an, an idea that there might be problems in Enfield, that there could be more than one location. And again, your previous speaker talked about our retail park as well as our town centre. It's extraordinarily difficult to expect the police to be able to manage a civil order throughout all of North London when they're not certain where the disorder may take place. I hope the police look at it and if there are lessons to be learned, then clearly they should learn their lessons. I don't think we should blame the police for the difficulties that occurred tonight. As the leader of Enfield Council, obviously your, your day time is, is going to be ordinarily linked to local politics, local finances, bin collections, all those sort of issues that you have to deal with on a daily basis. Is there a sense now, do you think, and you talked about some of the deprivation within Enfield, that you need to focus on community building in, in these sort of areas? Community cohesion is an enormously important issue, and we do that, and we work with the police and other agencies locally to ensure that we do that, and we want to do that. And it is a challenge in time. There is no doubt that with, with less cash, there are difficulties, and with people who may have difficulties in, in terms of employment in the future, that there may be issues that that raises. But at the end of the day, notwithstanding all of this, there is no justification for this sort of attack. And we will be working with our partners, because the first thing we'll be doing tomorrow morning is cleaning up. And our staff will be out early in the morning to try and make, make Enfield look as it usually does, by getting rid of the debris. Doug Taylor, leader of Enfield Council, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.